cardboard. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I'm trying. I got to have some fun doing something. I don't know. But um, welcome to your eighth boot camp training. Keeping it going, keeping it real. Thank you for joining me again. Um, awesome. You got my contact information. We're not going to go through that again. I'm going to get started right away. Uh, last time we were here was for module number seven. So this is module number eight. Um, so last time we were here, we also spoke about, um, mm -mm -mm, right, the exclusionary illnesses. And I gave you two ways to memorize that. I gave you gasoline, right? That green and white gas station, green and white and green and white only, um, Hess with the letter N. And then I said, I gave you a sentence, right? What do you do with those folks that are not feeling well, send sick employees home now? So that was, in case you missed it, you want to go back, go back to module seven. That's what we were talking about um, on how to memorize those. Okay, so awesome, possum. So here we go. Um, I'm going to cover something. So again, this is, it's also in your, in your, in your booklet, right? So there are only two things that we can control. I'm going to show them to you now. Let me see if I can find it in here. So at least I can point you back to the, um, the e-study guide. Oh, okay. Perfect. Um, so if you've got this out, you'll want to look at page five, the bottom of page five. And we're talking about bacteria right? And an acronym for it, right? So I love acronyms. I love me some acronyms. So again, going to page five, right? So from your e-study guide, take a look at page number five of your e-study guide, right? And that acronym, so we're talking about bacteria specifically, right? But, um, so bacteria, I'll read off the definition. You've got it there. Um, bacteria are the greatest concern of the biological contaminants. Bacteria are found everywhere. What was that? Bacteria are found where? Everywhere. That's right. And under favorable conditions, which is what we're going to be talking about, and under favorable conditions, they can reproduce very rapidly. And here's the acronym in case you don't have this out, right? So we're talking about, you know what, let me put it in red because they're so nasty, right? So we're talking about, bum, bum. we're talking about bacteria, right? And the acronym to help you with it is, you probably already have it, but I'll give it to you. It's fat, fat tom. Okay, so out of fat tom, there's only two we can really control. All right, but I'm going to give them all to you. And again, I, I write it out horizontally so it's easier to read. But, and then I go ahead and I write it down vertically so it's easier to write. Right, so let me give you fat tom like this. F A T. T O M. All right, perfect. And I'm gonna switch colors just because I want Fat Tom to stand out, right? And do we need to face me a little? Hello, hello. All right. So the F is for food, right? What kind of food, right? So the type of food that we're talking about is, and I'm gonna put it here. We're talking about T C S foods, right? Talking about TCS foods. Um, uh, yeah, I'll put it in here. TCS foods, and we're concerned about them because we need to be mindful of the TDZ. Um, and you're going to see why I was struggling with whether I should put that there or not. And uh, oh my God, being being obsessive compulsive is so challenging sometimes. Um, anyway, and that I'm still not happy with that theme. Whatever, I gotta move on, right? Um, so what are we saying when we're talking about TCS foods, right? Some foods do not are not originally a TCS food, right? Take a tomato, for example. 
If I take a tomato, <coughs> excuse me, if I take a tomato and just put it out there, it's okay. But if I slice it, dice it, chop it, or mince it, now I need to either cook it, refrigerate it, or serve it. Now it becomes a TCS food. So there are some foods that the moment they meet a knife, the moment you manipulate them, they now become a TCS foods. Other foods are already, are already TCS foods, right? Like raw poultry, cooked poultry is a TCS food as a matter of fact, right? So let's say I go to store um, cooked poultry and most people think I'm gonna store cooked poultry, I'm gonna put away co uh, cooked poultry. They think I'm putting it away hot. I don't always have to put away cooked anything hot, right? You have leftovers in your refrigerator. So if I go to store cooked poultry, I may need to store it at 41 degrees or less, right? Or 135 or higher to keep it out of the TDZ zone, right? Out of the temperature danger zone, right? The A is acidity, right? So you've got a scale, right? Oops. You've got a scale, and, and on one end of the scale you have alkaline, on the other end of the scale, right, um, oh my god, and then on the other side of the scale you have alkaline, I hope I spelled that right. Alexa, how do you spell alkaline? See, I would have destroyed your day had I messed all that. Anyway, so it's A-L-K-A-L-I-N-E, alkaline. Anyway, so then you've got this little spectrum. <laughs> oh, yes, I know. Thank you. Um, so you've got that information on the top of page 6 of your e-study guide, right? So the neutral is roughly, um, what was it, 7 and a half? Let me check my note. Because I want to make sure, I, I always want to make sure that my brain hasn't slipped somewhere, um, somewhere else, I should say, right? But, um, bing, 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 bing. I think it was four point. Oh my gosh. I don't recall. Oh, here we go. I said, yep, yeah, there it is. So the, the actual values are on the bottom of page five, the, the, the little graphic is on the bottom of page six. So we're looking at, so I'm going to erase it in a second. So we're looking at 4.6, right? And then we've got it to 7.5, 7.5. That's given if this scale, if the scale goes from 0 to 14, right? So these are the values if we're looking at a scale of, seven, of 0 to, um, to 14, right? 0 to 14, then these are your values. So if, I don't know, the sort of safe exam gives you 0 to 10, try to find the middle ground, assuming it's in there. I don't know if it's going to be in there or not. But that's acidity. So a couple of foods that fall under acidity there. Um, uh, gosh. So, oh, let me not go into that. Eh, do I want to cover that? Um, so certain foods you can make alkaline or acidic. But you would need to be able to verify it, right? So that's why there are some things that I cook, that I make, that I intentionally make them extra acidic because I don't, I don't measure it, right? So I want to make sure they're acidic. So, um, so anyway, the T, um, now the T in the book, I'm going to follow the book. The first T, it's got temperature, temperature. And then the other T is time, right? So temperature, we're talking about, again, we're talking about over there, um, the TDZ, right? We're talking about TDZ, we're talking about cooking temps, which by the way, the first thing that is more likely to cause foodborne illness is your dirty hands. This is the second thing most likely to lead to uh, to foodborne illnesses, right? Cooking temperatures. A lot of folks are not properly cooking their food, um, especially for the at-risk groups. And I'm going to talk to you about the at-risk groups after this. 
I'll mention them now, but I'll put them on the board. So the at-risk groups are, are children under, specifically under the age of one. I mean, babies, um, babies are at risk. Ba basically, like a lot of things with COVID, right? But babies, um, pregnant women keep coming on and off the chart. I don't know why, but with a pregnant woman, so the, the woman herself is at risk, the unborn baby is at risk. Another group of the population are the elderly, right, senior citizens. And then the other group of the population is people that are on dialysis, that are not healthy, right, severely not healthy. So those are the folks that are at risk. Those are your at-risk people groups. And with respect to the elderly, by the way, before it, I'll cover it again, but it's good to hear it two or three times. The elderly should not be eating raw seed or sprout products, right? Those products are not good for the elderly, raw seed and sprout products. They should also not be eating any undercooked meats, any raw shellfish product, any raw beef products, okay? They, they should, everything, so the senior citizen diet should mirror mostly what a child should be eating, minus all that candy and all that junk, right? Um, so time, uh, um, oh, oxygen. Oh, let me give you a little bit of information on oxygen. Let me give you a little bit of information over here on this. Oh, and you know what else? Temperature, uh, we also need um, cooling. Cooling, reheating. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff. Reheating, that N is terrible. Anyway, so you, <laughs> you should be talking about, I need a much larger board. I'm like, I'm falling out of there. But um, so time, um, so there are a couple of things that fall under time, including that cooling part, right? But there are several components that fall under time. And again, the book is built great, but one thing that you wanna be mindful of, and it says so in the book, it says, Bacteria doubles every 20 minutes in the TDZ, right? So that is so critical for you to think about. And let me, let me share something with you again. So it says bacteria doubles every 20 minutes, right? Every 20, it doubles every 20 minutes every 20 minutes in the TDZ. Now, I just really want to show you what the TDZ is again, right? Because we said it's 135 on the high end, 41 degrees on the low end, right? So, but please realize that it's anything in the TDZ. And that's why I'll try to trick my kids, my students, or when I do trainings anywhere, 134 degrees Fahrenheit is in the TDZ, especially when you're working at a hospital, children, anything like that, that that's already in the TDZ. I would fail you for that question, right? Another TDZ number that's already bad is 42 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything inside of there is bad. So remember, you wanna to try to stay 135 or higher, 41 degrees or lower. So then you stay out of the TDZ because look, and especially, you know what number is really a party zone for food? Um, it's, what was it? It was like, um, was that? like 75 to 125, something like that if my number is correct. 75 degrees to 125 degrees, that is, that is spring break on Miami Beach for bacteria. Okay, at least back in the old days, right? Pre COVID. But um, so that is party zone. Oxygen. Now, here's a great thing about oxygen, right? Some microorganisms do not need oxygen to grow. What am I talking about? If you get yourself, have you ever seen a canned product that has a little bit of a belly? Well, what's growing in, those, in that product? Let me see if I can use a different color. So you know what? I'll just erase this guy over here. So it doesn't interfere with that. So what's growing inside of a canned product, if there's a belly in it, it's botulism, right? And like I said in another um, 
in another module, botulism is like the, all the harmful, the, more, the most harmful bacteria you cannot smell, taste, or see. That's the problem with botulism. Going back to babies. So that's why infants, I'm Puerto Rican and Cuban, right? So the moment my, my first two sons had a sore throat, what did my mom say? Give the baby some honey, right? Problem is, honey is not pasteurized, right? They do sell pasteurized honey. So um, unpasteurized honey contains spores. Those spores may contain botulism. That botulism may make your baby severely ill or, or, or kill that baby, okay? Another place for botulism, uh, potential growth of botulism, a baked wrapped potato. You bake a potato, you either serve it hot, keep it hot, or unwrap it and refrigerate it, right? Again, what did we do? We would keep the baked potato wrapped, leave it on the counter, eat it hours later. We probably got sick, but we were young and didn't die from it. But you feed somebody that big potato that's been sitting there for an extended period of time, there's a, there's a risk of that, a real risk of that, okay? Uh, all right, perfect. Let me get rid of that point. And we're at the last one. And the last one is moisture, right? Moisture. So if you receive a, a bag or any kind of product, then you can pretty much identify moisture damage. The, the container usually turns yellow or gets wrinkled, something like that. But um, one example I like to share was when my mom would cook, she would have her hands wet or, or the little scoop cup and she would dig it into the rice and, and serve the rice. Now what happens is if that little cup was wet, when you went to scoop and it wet the other rice or your hands were wet, then you have those little fuzzy, that, that little hair that grows on the, uh, on the rice and that's not good either. Right, so Fat Tom. So what are the only two components within Fat Tom that you can control. The only two that you can really have any control over are temperature and time. These are the only two that you can control, right? Because we can be mindful of TCS foods, we can be mindful of the TDZ, and over here, obviously, we can be mindful of the clock slash time, right? Like it says in there. So time to make it a little bit more memorable, um, specifically where we're talking about days, right? Because how many days can properly cooled food be stored? Do you remember that from another module or maybe from your reading from the book, right? So safely you can store food for seven days. And then again, remember that if we're gonna store food for seven days, let's use October 5th um, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a starting point, right? So let's say today is Monday, October 5th, right? So we had set seven days. We don't add October 5th plus seven days, that would give us October 12th, right? So it would be October 5th is already one day, that day. If today is Monday, October 5th, that's Monday, right, two. So it's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You got it? So if today is October, today is Monday, October 5th, right, and we're talking about a seven day window, we need to include that number when we do the seven, and that would give us 11. On the 11th, that's the toss day, right? Again, I'm going to go back and forth a little to refresh your memory so that we don't make the mistake because I'll tell you what I'll put on the test. I'll put the 12th. And I know that that's wrong, but I don't, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna test your knowledge, right? Awesome. Um, so that's that, food is that. So that's the acronym to help, um, to help you remember the bacteria and the fact that it doubles every 20 minutes. I highly recommend that you go through that uh, e-study guide two or three times, cover to cover. It's a, it's a quick read, the information is there. You may also catch something that I, it slipped my mind to mention because I am gonna go relatively quick. 
Oh, there I go. I just caught something. Right? So with the M in moisture, right, this is something critical, right? So from Fat Tom, let's take a look at moisture for a second, right? So look at moisture. The AW scale goes from what? From dry to just damp, right? So the scale goes from, right? Your scale, your AW scale, right? Because you'll see it in the book, it's right there. Um, it is 0, 0.0 to 1.0. 0, 0.0 to 1.0. So that's it. Just a little bit of dampness and, and you got it. Right? Um, what else? Just in case I missed anything, make sure. Remember, I'm giving you everything in, um, in, 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 I just realized I misspelled acidic too, I think. Oh, anyway, shame on me. I'm so used to word. All right, guys, so let's keep going. <laughs> you know what? It's so weird not having an audience, right? So I have to make myself laugh. All right, here's a question for you, right? I'm going to ask you a question. Where does food safety begin? Right? Got that? The question for you is, where does food safety begin? Think about that. Does it begin in the kitchen? Does it begin when I start washing something out? Does it begin, where does it begin? Have you thought about it? Okay, well, there, there is an answer for it, right? So, food safety begins with purchasing. Now, what does that mean? That means that if I bought, um, I, I love to use the example here, here around South Florida, if I bought stone crab, or, or just regular crab. Stone crab is great, right? But if I buy stone crab, because it's pretty pricey, if I buy it from a little white van down by the beach, um, is that a risk? Right? Oh, heck yeah, it sure is. Right? Um, because the health inspector has never and will never inspect, inspect that little white van down by the beach. So what do I need to use since I know, like I know, that food safety begins with purchasing, I need to use, I need to use approved suppliers, right? Cisco, CBI, GFS, um, what is it? There's a whole bunch. There's a couple of, there's a bunch of different companies, but I need to use an approved supplier. So let me ask you this. I own a restaurant and man, I'll tell you what, my grandma, if she were still around, she used to make the best um, pecan rum cake you'd ever had, right? So then, can I sell grandma's uh, pecan pie, pecan and rum? Mm -hmm. Can I sell her pecan and rum pie? At my place? Come on, it's my grandma. Right? Whoops. Whoops, it is. Everything's coming down. And the answer is no. For the same reason. Right? Because the health inspector never has and never will inspect my grandma's kitchen. Right? The other thing is that um, somebody becomes ill. Let's say I buy let's say I buy these pies from a really good customer. And they spend tons of money at my restaurant. Well, if somebody gets sick at my restaurant, they're not going to go after my customer. They're going to go after my insurance company and after me. And depending on how that insurance is structured, I may lose my house, my car, my everything. Okay? So um, purchasing has to is where food safety begins. And, it be, and you must purchase from approved suppliers. 
Um, remember, your, your, the public's health is in your hands. Okay, they're eating at your restaurant, trusting that you're doing the right thing. So make sure that you are complying. Um, all it takes is one slip up, and before you know it, you could easily wipe out quite a few people. Okay, and, and not everybody dies. Some people end up with, um, with liver malfunction and all sorts of awful things. Um, okay, so let me make sure that I've got everything I need there. I want to... Okay, no, that's perfect. So let's stop there. I thank you. Thank you for this segment. We are going to, the next video will be six, seven, eight. I think it's nine, right? I don't know. Anyway, I, I need to, uh, I need to say thank you for joining our boot camp training. And again, keep studying for that Surf Safe exam. If you need the, um, the e-study guide, shoot me an email. I'll send it off to you. Be blessed. Bye-bye.